Hello everyone, I'm John Higgins, contributing writer to Film and TV Now, and I would like to welcome one and all to this interview special with Peter Stein, who co-directs with his wife Dawn Freer, a brand new documentary, Out of Exile, The Photography of Fred Stein, which chronicles the life and work of his father, a photographer in exile from Dresden in the Second World War, who created some iconic portraits of people like Albert Einstein and Henry Kissinger. The film recently played um, at the Paris International Film Festival, where it won an award for best documentary editing, which is credited to Dawn Freer again. Um, Stein himself is an established cinematographer in his own right, and his work includes Like a Friday the 13th, Part 2, the original 1981 sequel to the 1980s Sean Cunningham horror classic, Ruben Ruben from 1983, starring Tom Conti in an Oscar nominated role, and the 1989 version of Pet Cemetery, directed by Mary Lambert. Peter, a warm welcome to you. Thank you very much, John. It's great to be here. Okay, so the documentary is extraordinary. I, I thought this was absolutely brilliant. One of my favorites of the festival. I mean, there were many good films, but this is a real, extra, this was extra special for me watching this. Now it's a fascinating dual narrative because it chronicles your father's life and your attempts to get it, his work out, showcased at various museums and stuff. So um, in terms of the history, your father's own life story and history, I mean, did he, was he, did he tell you early on what, what his life was before he came to America? Well, as a, as a child, I certainly knew that uh, my parents were refugees uh, from Germany originally, and they had just arrived in the United States from, uh, from Paris, where they first left Germany uh, as exiles. Um, so I, I knew that much about the history. But uh, then as I grew older, um, I understood and learned that he had been a, uh, uh, a lawyer in Germany. And well, in fact, um, he had just graduated from law school, the first in his class uh, at Leipzig University when Hitler came to power. And at that time in Germany, I, I believe it might still be the same, in order to practice law in, in front of a courtroom, you had to spend two years after law school as an apprentice in the state prosecutor's office. So that was a government job. And uh, he graduated in 1933. And that was the first year, uh, that was the year that Hitler came to power. And the first laws that he passed was that Jews couldn't work for the government. So my father was fired and he could never be a, a lawyer because he couldn't do those first two years in the state prosecutor's office. And then uh, he got a job uh, with a friend's father. And, um, but uh, and my father was very active politically. He would go out on his bicycle handing out leaflets against the Nazis. And um, one day his, friend told him that his father warned him that the Gestapo had come around asking uh, questions about Fred. And the week before that, they had uh, done the same thing with a young woman and she was arrested and never heard from again. So he told my father, you better leave Germany now. So he and my mother, they had just gotten married uh, they left uh, on the pretext of taking a honeymoon. You couldn't just leave. And they went to Paris. And uh, that's where he learned photography, decided to become a photographer. Mm -hmm. And um, you co-directed this with your wife. And I mean, in terms of in the terms of the as co-directing, how did you structure everything? What was the how what was the process for that? Well, Dawn. Dawn Freer, my wife, she was the, the creative force uh, behind the structure of the film. She, she wrote it and, and uh, she, you know, as you said, she was the editor. And I um, came up with a lot of the sequences that we needed to shoot. And I did a lot of the research on the music and the stock footage. The film has a lot of stock footage. And I uh, traveled and uh, shot interviews and so on. So we worked together very closely. And, uh, and then as she was editing it, I would make suggestions. And uh, 
you know, it, it was truly a joint effort. But, uh, you know, it, as with uh, many families, uh, she's the brains in this family. I did the legwork. <laughs> Um, so obviously, um, you use transcripts of your parents' memories. I mean, there was a lot of, yeah. I think that was the great thing. So how much material of the transcripts did you have overall? Well, how much is in the film or how much did, did, Just did we Just generally, have? because obviously, you know, we, at the very beginning of it, you were, you were, there's a sequence where you, you had your, your mother had all these photographs and everything. And then as to tell the story, you have memories of your mother your parents you know this reflections which are voiced by actors and i just yeah. wanted to know how much how much material did you have to work from to create the memoirs in the film we we had quite a bit and we went through uh all, all that we had except for my uh, my father's words are taken from his correspondences um he was a prolific letter writer and in those days there was no email so we had carbon copies of everything that he wrote to various people around the world and so um we looked at that and uh especially dawn looked at that and and uh we had a lot of uh, neither of us speak german i can sort of get by in it a little bit but most of his correspondences were in german and uh, we had many of the letters translated and then uh, culled down what we thought would be uh, relevant for the film. And um, I did a, a, a series of um, interviews with my mother before she passed away. And uh, so we, we could listen to those and, and uh, transcribe what we felt was the most important. Mm -hmm. And um, you did mention, I just want to just um, focus on the editing process. I mean, in terms of how long was your original cut? And I mean, in terms of when you were structuring it and putting it together, how, how did you work around? How did you sort of structure the film? Well, we figured it would be a, a film for television. That was, that was my original concept. And uh, I was the producer. And... Um, Actually, I, <laughs> I here's an interesting story. When we, when we started years ago, I said one thing we both said. I said, the one thing is I do not want to be in this film. It's a film about my father. And Dawn said, I do not want to edit this film. <laughs> well, as it turned out, <laughs> I'm in the film a lot and Dawn edited it. So, um, so the original thought that I had was, I want to film for television about my father. And, uh, and we actually hired uh, a couple of editors and we just didn't like what was happening. And finally we realized the only person who can really edit this film and take the time where we won't have to spend a fortune, which we don't have, uh, is if Dawn cuts it. And so thank God she agreed to cut it. And as I was saying, uh, originally I, I thought the film would be good for television, but it was so much material. And, and then when, uh, when it became a story of me promoting his work finally, uh, it, it seemed it was only natural to be a feature film, which could then go to television. Yeah. Um, so, um, so my obvious thing is, is how long did it overall, what, how long was the whole process from first, from conception to the final cut? Well, I'm a cinematographer, so I'm in the film business. So I would say from the first time I started shooting movies, I was always thinking, wow, this story of my parents, uh, especially my father, would be a great movie. Um, it would be a great narrative film for someone like Spielberg to do, but he's done his, uh, his uh, exile film, um, or a great documentary. So for my whole career, I was always thinking of uh, doing a, a documentary. Um, 
you know, I had cameras, I had crew, I had myself. Um, and so every time I would be able to get a little exhibition here or there or met someone, I would shoot interviews and I would shoot the exhibition. So we have, and, and so this is over a period of almost 40, 40 years. Oh. So I have hundreds and hundreds of hours of film. And that was certainly something for Dawn when she was cutting to say, that's no good, that's no good, that's no good, or not relevant. Not that it wasn't good. It's just, you know, a, a, a gallery opening that we might have had 25 years ago, just didn't cut it for this movie. So I've been thinking about it for 40 years, but the last three years is when we actually made the film. Okay, it's an incredible process. I mean, my next question is, you're a member of the ASC and you've been an established cinematographer, you got everything there. And obviously for pe people coming into the industry, they want to, you know, they're, they're looking for collaborators, camera people, crew and all that. Now, in terms of the awareness in the industry of this little project, I mean, how much of a challenge was it to get people in your inner circle to support this? I mean, what were the, you know, did, did you go to companies? Did you go to studios before making it? No, I, I didn't go to anybody. I, uh, during the shooting, I went to one of the companies that I, uh, well, a couple of, couple of places that I work with and rent equipment from and, uh, you know, got donations of cameras to use for, for the shoots. Um, and also I was a professor in the graduate film school at NYU, New York University for uh, a long time. And uh, so I, they have a, a huge production center. I, in fact, I think their production center might be the uh, largest rental company in, in uh, New York City. Um, so they, they uh, supported me and let me borrow equipment, lights and camera and so on. Okay. And we, we, in going back to the stories of the challenges you had to try and get the photograph showcase, I mean, the story about trying to get it in Dresden and then all of a sudden you were hit with a hiccup and stuff. I mean, what are the immediate and long-term plans to showcase these? Because obviously, I think after people see this, this will be a really great opportunity because people will want to see the specifics of the um, exhibition. So what are the immediate and long-term plans at the moment? You know, it's... It's so difficult, uh, especially when I was starting out. It's, it's easier now, uh, but when I was starting out, people would say, or I, I could feel them thinking, you know, well, if he's so great, how come I never heard of him? Um, which was, I had one ace in the hole, which was his photograph of Albert Einstein is an iconic picture that everyone has seen. So, in fact, in his lifetime, that picture was very famous, and he had it on his uh, business card. One side was his portrait of Einstein. Um, but I've had great luck in Germany uh, with exhibitions and, and moderate luck in, in France. Um, but, and the United States has been tough, and I'm focusing on that now. But I don't have uh, many connections in the art world or, or the photography world for that matter. And, um, you know, my initial, my initial thought was I approach a big museum and the curator would say, oh, this is great work. Take it under his or her wing and uh, get me art galleries and other museums would follow and so on. And well, that certainly has not happened. And I don't think people are, out there waiting to discover a photographer who's been dead for so many years. So it's come to me to do that. And his work is, it, it, not only is it brilliant artistically, but it's also brilliant in terms of the people that he photographed, the portraits uh, are of so many of the most important intellectuals and uh, physicists, other scientists, artists, writers, painters, uh, architects, philosophers, uh, the, the real uh, intellectual elite of the mid 20th century, who people may have heard, 
uh, you know, different in Germany, it's a one group in the United States, another group in France, another group, and, and then the, the whole group in, in total. Um, it's wonderful for people to be able to actually see those faces. Um, and then his street photography in Paris and New York in the 30s and 40s, Paris before the war and the 40s in New York during and after the war. Uh, it's, it's, it's a remarkable body of work for history as well as for art history. Mm -hmm. And um, you've mentioned the Albert Einstein photo. I'm just curious to know, I mean, do you have any other personal favorites in the photographs? Well, uh, yeah, I do. Um, there's a, a, a photograph, not, it's not a, well, it is a portrait, but it's not a portrait of someone famous. There's a little girl who's, so, I don't know, five or six years old in a little cart that her brother built in, in Harlem. He did a whole series of pictures in Harlem in New York. And that's a, uh, just a, a very moving and sweet uh, picture. And this picture of Dolly, uh, Salvador Dolly, is uh, another great image of uh, Dolly. I mean, I have stories also that my father told me. For instance, the one of Dolly, he asked Dolly, he said, how do you get your mustache to stay like that? And he said, oh, I put sugar water on it. He said, one of the side benefits is that the flies come and land on it. <laughs> um, so obviously we, you had a great um, run at the Paris International Film Festival. I mean, what are the immediate release plans for the documentary? Well, I, I, I'm hoping our executive producer is in uh, Germany and uh, they have a very good uh, relationship with the uh, television channel ARTE, uh, A-R-T-E, uh, which is a, a collaboration between Germany and France. So it will possibly or probably be on ARTE, but I, I need to find a television release um, in the United States and around the world and certainly in, in the UK. And I'm also very interested in, in other museums. Uh, uh, the film, the, the film, certainly, and the uh, exhibition and my father's work has never been shown in the UK. Um, although there are three portraits, three or four portraits in the uh, National Portrait Gallery in uh, London, um, there's never been a real exhibition of his work in, in, in a major or any museum in, in the UK. So I'd be really interested in that. Okay, um, so two final questions before we wrap up. I mean, yeah. um, are you planning to, what, what are you planning to explore in your future work? I mean, obviously this, this has got real great potential. I think it's a fantastic movie. Um, and I hope that it does get seen by as many people as possible. What would you be keen to explore in future work? <laughs> well, I have a film, but I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't know that, uh, that my subject will be interested in doing it. It's another documentary and it's actually a documentary about the, uh, the uh, owner of the gallery where we show in New York City. Uh, and that is um, Marianne Rosenberg and her gallery is Rosenberg and Co. And her, grand, her grandfather's was Paul Rosenberg, who was a very famous art dealer in, in Paris in the 20s and 30s. Um, and uh, he was the exclusive dealer of Picasso and Matisse and, and uh, Brock and uh, Leger and, and other uh, famous uh, painters. And um, the Nazis, took his gallery, which was the whole building, as well as over 400 of his paintings. But the family uh, got back after the war, they got back a lot of the paintings. And the story is, is an amazing story of how she, uh, her family escaped from, from France and her father was, uh, was in the free French in the army and he, he uh, they did a film on about his father. It was called The Train with um, Burt Lancaster. I think. They yeah, I remember that. that one. It's it's often on TV here. Yes. 
Yes, well, that was her father, not her oh. grandfather. That was her father, and he actually freed the... So anyway, you should see the movie if you haven't seen it for your, okay. your audience. Yeah. All right. And my final question is, is what are you most proud of about this documentary? Well, I love, I love the way it builds. You know, it's sort of interesting because you hear that my father died right at the beginning. And normally that would be like, well, I mean, obviously he died. He was, but um, it, it's just woven together so beautifully and builds to a crescendo. And the music works so well with the picture and the pictures. Um, the, the, it's a beautiful introduction to a photographer's uh, er, 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 um it's uh, it's very graceful and dignified and 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 moving uh, and and uh, I, I'm just so proud and I'm so proud of the work that my wife Dawn did on it and and that I managed to to bring it to fruition after so many years of, of wanting a film. Yeah. Well, you know something, Peter, everything comes, everything good comes to those who wait. And certainly I think your, your documentary is going to certainly stimulate interest in your father's work. And I, I think you should have every reason to be proud. Um, so thank you so much for your insights and doc, into this documentary. It's been a pleasure. Um, just generally, Out of Exile, The Photography of Fred Stein is an excellent documentary and celebrates the legacy of an amazing photographic talent. Um, for more in articles, interviews and reviews like this, you can go to www.filmandtvnow.com and you can see a replay of this interview on my official YouTube channel, John Higgins Film Review. If you want to participate in the 2023 edition of the Paris International Film Festival, be it as a filmmaker or as an, a viewer, you can go to www.parisintlfest.com. Support independent films and filmmakers, support the cinemas as they reopen. And thank you again, Peter, and thank you for watching. And thank you so much, John. Okay.